Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. Now in this lecture, we'll see that what is the EFS or Elastic Fire System? What's the purpose of it? And how the Elastic Fire System can be used as a common data source for workloads and applications running upon multiple instances. So we go step by step. We just see the theory first. We'll see that how you can create the EFS Fire Systems, how you allow that Fire System to be shared across multiple instances. So we just see the entire process from scratch. Amazon EFS or Elastic File System. Now what's the purpose of it? EFS will give you the scalable file storage to be used with EC2 instances. If I say scalable, this means that it can be resized. You manufacture the EFS file systems and you allow the instances to connect to the file systems using the mount targets you manufacture. And this EFS file system can act as a common data source for workloads and applications running upon multiple instances. One thing you have to keep in mind, EFS is not supported on Windows instances. You can make use of it for Linux instances only. Now we'll see the step-by-step -step process to make use of this service. So these are four steps that we'll perform on the management console. First thing first, we'll manufacture an EFS file system. We're gonna mount the file system upon two Linux instances. Then we'll just test it. And then finally we'll just clean up. So let's jump over to our management console and see that how you can manufacture an EFS file system and it can be shared among two Amazon Linux instances. The very first thing that we'll do is that we'll just go to the EC2 under the compute section and we'll just manufacture two different security groups. One will be assigned to our two Amazon Linux instances and the other one will be assigned to our EFS file system. So I go to the security groups and we just create the first one. So the first one would be ec 2 hg and I can just include a description. For example, I can just type in this security group will be assigned to all Amazon Linux instances. So you can, you can include any of the descriptions over here to ensure that you can get to know the purpose of this group. And that's it. Once we assign the, the name and the description, because this will be assigned to our Amazon Linux instances, we need to SSH to the instances. We need to initiate the SSH connection to both instances. So I add a rule and allow the SSH, the stand for secure shell from my IP. I click on create. And then you can just search for it and you can assign a tag so that you can just recognize it. And that's it. Now, one thing you have to make sure is that you just copy the group ID of this security group because uh, this will be included as a part of the EFS group. So just click on create security group once again and just type in EFS hyphen SG. Fine. And just type in this security group will be assigned to the EFS file system. So you have to make sure that. Uh, you include the description and once you do that I just allow the inbound rule that is NFS because our instances will communicate with this file system because we'll be creating a file system and assign the security group to that file system and we allow the instances to communicate with that file system using NFS protocol and the port will be 2049. So the custom source would be the group ID, the security group ID of our instances. I go ahead and click on create. So this is a prerequisite. You have to make sure that you manufacture two different security groups. One group will be assigned to our instances and the other security group will be assigned to our EFS file system. So let's label it as EFS hyphen SG. That's it. Now, in the second step, we just go to the services. We open EFS. You can find EFS under storage. So once I just go to the EFS dashboard, I click on create file system and we choose the default VPC in Mumbai. And you will see that if it will choose all the subnets and all the linked availability zones in the same region or of the same VPC. Because what we want to do is that we have to create or manufacture three mount targets so that the instances across our VPC can access the file system because the instances 
in our VPC will be able to access or share the Elastic File System or EFS File System using the mount targets we manufacture. So we have chosen three different availability zones or three different subnets of our VPC so that the EC2 instances across our VPC can access this file system using these three different mount targets. We click on next step. Okay, one thing I skipped is that I need to just go back once again. We have to ensure that we choose the EFS H3. This is a very important step that you have to perform to ensure that your front end instances can access your EFS file system over the NFS protocol that stands for Network File System Protocol that uses port 2049. So you have to apply the security group of the EFS that you have pre-configured. Click on next step. Then you can also apply the lifecycle policy. Now you can also include a tag, but we can skip it. It's optional. Lifecycle policy is a new feature. It works the same as the S3 lifecycle management policy. Over here, if your data is not accessed frequently, it can be moved to the EFS infrequent access storage class to bring down your storage cost. As if now, we'll just make it as none because we don't want to apply any lifecycle policy. Then you can make use of throughput mode. In most of the cases, even in the production environment, you'll be using the bursting throughput for your file systems. However, there are some exceptional cases where your applications need a better throughput performance. So in cases where your applications will need or your workloads, they are they need a better throughput performance. In that case, you have to go with the provisioned. But I'll just go with the bursting. Also, you can choose performance mode. In most of the cases, you'll be using the general purpose performance mode for most of the file systems. However, in few cases, if you have tens, hundreds, or thousands of instances accessing or sharing the same EFS file system, then you'll be using the max IO performance mode. But in our case, because we have just two instances using the file system, we'll be going with the general purpose. If you want, you can e enable the encryption, but as of now, we're gonna skip this step. We just go ahead and click on next step, and we can just uh, review any of the parameters, and if you want, you can change any one of them. But as of now, everything is perfect. We go ahead and click on create file system. So what we have done so far, we manufactured two different security groups, one for the instances, other for the EFS file system. We manufactured the EFS file system. We applied the security group that we have pre-configured and this EFS file system is being produced. Now, we just go to the services and we just go to the EC2 dashboard and let's launch two Amazon Linux instances and we connect these two Amazon Linux instances to this EFS file system using the mount targets we produce or manufacture. So we just go to running instances and click on launch instance. In our case, we'll be using the Amazon Linux AMI. You have to make sure that you choose only the Linux AMIs or the Linux instances because the EFS is not applicable for the Windows instances. You can only use this thing for or with the Linux instances only. So I choose the Amazon Linux CMI, click on select. Let's go with the t2.microS instance type, click on next configure instance details. Now the number of instances that I'll include would be two. So I'll have the EFS file system being shared across two Amazon Linux instances. Scroll down, you have to add the file system, I add the file system. It automatically picks the file system that we have pre-configured or we have manufactured beforehand. If I just go to the EFS file system and see the file system ID, you will see that it is same, which is showing up on this page. The next thing is that we have to include a bash script so that we can, we can create mount targets upon the two instances so that we can allow the instances to connect to this EFS file system at every boot. Now I'll be using a script and that script I'll also include that in the resources section so that you can perform these steps by yourself. I copy this bash script and 
I just paste this in the user data. Now you don't have to change anything over here except you have to mention the file system ID. So I can just go back to my EFS or Elastic File System Mammon console. I copy the file system ID, go back, and I paste it over here. Once you mention the file system ID, if you want, you can change the mount point. Mount point can be changed if you want, otherwise, you can keep it to the default settings. Now, once you mention the script, click on Exact Storage. We will just use the same EBS volume, or I would say this is the default storage option we will be using. We click on Exact Tags, you can skip it. Click on Next, Configure Security Group. Now we'll be selecting the EC2 hyphen SG, the security group that we have used beforehand. So choose EC2 hyphen SG that we have pre configured. Click and review and launch. Launch. I can choose any of the existing key pairs. I have to make sure that I have the copy of that key because we'll be using that private key to get access to our instances. So I'll be using this one IMDB demo. I have the copy of it. I choose that I acknowledge I have access to this private key. Click on launch instances. So my two instances have been launched. I've created the mount targets so that these two instances can use the same EFS file system and that EFS file system can be used as a common storage so that the workloads and applications running upon both instances can use the same EFS file system common storage. I go to view instances and I can just tag these instances. So I can just type in like, for example, this is my instance A. And I can also just include the tag for the other instance. For example, this is my instance B. Fine. Now, the next thing we'll do is that we just get connected to these two different instances and see that how it works for us. What I will do is that I just open my terminal and let's do one thing. Let's get connected to our first instance. So I open my terminal window in front of you and increase the font size. The very first thing we'll do is that we just go to my desktop because this is where my keys pair is or private keys being saved. Now, if you're using Windows, of course you'll be using Putty. And I SSH to my instance. And first thing first, I need to mention the private key that I've be using. So this is the name of the private key. And it's include .pem ec2 hyphen user. This is the username of the instance at the rate. Then I just copy and paste the public IP address of my first instance, instance A. And I will connect. Now, um, the first thing I'll do is that is type in tf space hyphen capital T. So I can see that whether the file system is being mounted or not. Right, you can see that it gives me the output over here. I can see the entire output and I can see that what are the volumes and the file systems being mounted. Okay, so this is being done. Now this may take some time because whenever you mount any file system upon instance, it takes some time for that file system to show up. So I'm going to read on the command once again, and now you can see that it's showing up. This is the domain name of the same EFS file system, right? This is the one, and this is the mount target. Fine. Now, I just create one single text document. For example, let's type in sudo touch. Let's type the mount target mnt. EFS and for example, I want to create a text document test.txt. Done. Now, for example, I want to see whether it exists or not in my EFS file system. So I just go to my mount target uh, and type in text test.txt. You can see that it's showing up on my this instance A. Now, since we're using the common Elastic File System, I need to ensure that whether the same text document will show up on my second instance or not. We'll see that. So I open my terminal 
a new terminal window for the second instance. So uh, this is my terminal for the second instance. I go to my desktop and I SSH to my instance. I'll be using the same private key to ensure that I use the same key. It is copied, include a pen at the end of it and just type an easy to highway user at the rate. Now I, I will just mention the public IP address of my instance B. Let's do that and paste it. I just connect to it. Now I can just type in, for example, LS MNT EFS. And you can see that it's showing up. The same text document we manufactured through our instance A, but it's showing up on instance B because both my instances A and B are using the same or common EFS file system. Now let's create a new text document on our second instance. For example, let's type in sudo touch mnt EFS. This is the mount target. And for example, let's type in my first name dot txt. Fine. So let's type in ls mnt EFS. You can see that these are the two different text documents I manufactured. Now I go to my first instance terminal and just type the same command ls mnt EFS. And you can see that it's showing up. This means that now these two different instances can access my EFS file system using the mount targets or the mount target that I've created. This is a common EFS file system, which means that every single application or workload running upon these two instances will have the same common data source. That's how you make, make use of the EFS file system. So this is a very, very simple process for you to get started and understand that how it works for you. Now I'll do one thing because we, this is the completion of our lab session. I just go ahead and I can terminate both instances it's because we don't need that anymore. We don't need these instances anymore. And I can just go to my EFS file system, go to actions, and we're going to delete this file system so that you don't incur any further charges. Just in case if you're using a feature account just to perform this demonstration or to understand that how it works for you. That's all about the EFS or the file system. We have seen the entire process. That's it. Thank you so very much.